Right, today we're going to work on probability distributions for discrete random variables. There's some uh, big words here, so let's have a look at um, what each one means and how the whole thing sort of fits together. So we'll start with probability, or well, probability is about how likely an event is to happen, or the chance of an event happening. Distribution is how um, some sort of things, if you like, um, elements or, or things that might happen, how they can be spread. Okay, so how um, things are spread across uh, a, a range of possibilities. Possibilities. All right, so a distribution, um, you know, things being spread across a range of, prob of possibilities. So it could be that we are throwing a dice six times, and how many times do we get sixes? Could be no times, three times, four times. There's a range of possibilities that our event can be distributed across. Now the word random um, in probability terms, in what we're doing today, is says no particular pattern. All right, so no particular pattern. So we could get one event, no connection between one event and the next, um, things happening in a, in a random sort of order. So no, no particular um, pattern involved. Carry on from there. Okay, a variable is something can take, that can take different possibilities. Different possibilities. So if I am throwing, uh, tossing a coin possibilities. Um, let, let's say for example I am throwing six coins. How many uh, sixes do I get? Well there's different possibilities. I could get no sixes. One six, two six, three six, all the way up to six. So a variable is something that can take different possibilities. Okay, so let's have a look at um, a particular problem then. You toss two coins. What are the possibilities for the number of heads that you will obtain? Alright, so I want you to think about that and write down um, the range of possibilities for the heads. Okay, so um, we can put the um, or order, we can say that the variable x is the number of heads we get. Well, there's no guarantee we'll get heads, we might get two tails, so that would be no heads. We might get a tail and a head, which is one head, or we might get two heads. So now we've put down the range of possibilities, um, but we've not got a probability distribution yet, because um, there are no probabilities at the moment attached to those variables. So what I would like you to do now is to write down the probabilities of getting uh, no heads, two heads, and one head. I'll give you a few moments to do that. Okay, so what we should have come up there, no heads um, should be a quarter. Now there's two ways you can get um, a head, it could be on the first th uh, coin that's thrown, or it could be on the second. So the two possibilities will come to a half, and getting two heads is a quarter. So what we'll now see, if we've done this correctly, is that those probabilities should add up to one, uh, which of course they do. Okay, so all probabilities come up to one. So what we have in front of us now is a probability distribution for a discrete random variable. The variable can only take whole numbers, the numbers 0, 1 and 2, that's where the discrete comes in. The probabilities uh, for each variable um, are given, and the full range of variables and probabilities are there, showing you that the probabilities come to 1. And this is the condition for a full probability distribution, the sum of all our probabilities comes to 1. I'm now going to show you how we can calculate the mean, the mean expected uh, number of uh, heads on one throw. So we write out the distribution and then we apply um, the following sort of work. So we work out xpx. This is very similar to uh, working out the mean from a frequency distribution. Um, so we do x times px, so 0 times a quarter is 0, 1 times a half is a half and two times a quarter is also a half. Now the mean uh, for discrete random variables is called E of x, and it is found by calculating the sum of x p 
Px. And in this particular case, um, it's just by chance, but in this particular case, the sum of x px um, equals 1, a half plus a half. So the expected value is 1. So I'm now going to show you um, how to calculate the variance um, for a property distribution for discrete random variables. So using our, our same um, example of um, how many heads do we obtain and when we toss two coins, um, we introduce an extra column called x squared px because the variance formula for a discrete um, random variable property distribution is e of x squared minus e of x all squared. Now we worked out the e of x squared um, previously, sorry, the e of x um, previously, which came to 1. So we need to find the sum of x squared. Now this sum, sorry, e of x squared. Now e of x squared is equal to the sum of x squared p of x, and that's why you have a fourth column. So we do um, x times x px, so that column times that column gives me a zero, one times a half gives me a half, two times a half gives me one. So the sum of x squared px is a half plus one, which is 1.5. So I put that there, 1.5. So we drop that into the formula. So it's 1.5 minus 1 squared, which is 0.5. So the variance of this property distribution is 0.5. So, uh, having seen um, an example for two coins, I'd now like you to do exactly the same work for three coins. So, this is the um, layout that is required. Um, I would like you to stop the video at this point and see if you can work out the property distribution and the mean and variance on your own, and then come back to the video and check um, your answers with mine. So here's the full solution, and um, you'll see it's pretty much identical to the previous question, just with um, an extra possibility of up to three coins, so different probabilities. Um, we'll go into that later if you had any difficulty uh, on how to do that, I'll show you on the next slide. Um, and then it's a straightforward um, procedure of working out xpx, x squared px, getting your totals and dropping them into the formula in precisely the same way you did before. Just in case you had some difficulties with getting the properties, I'll show you how they were obtained. Probably the best way of doing this is to write out all the possibilities. So we could have three heads. Equally, we could have three tails. We could have two heads and a tail. We could have two tails and a head. And of course, the order in which they come um, uh, gives us three more possibilities, because the tail could have been in the last position, or it could have been in the middle position, or it could have been in the first position. And in exactly the same way, it, the head could have been in the third, second, or first. So altogether we have eight possibilities. Now, in terms of no heads, there's a one out of eight chance. In terms of one head only, or we can see that there were three possibilities where we have one head out of the eight altogether. And for two heads, come to this side, we've got two heads there and there and there, so there's three eighths there, and finally three heads that occur only once, and so that um, is one eighth. So that's how the properties were worked out. So we're now going to look at something slightly different, look at the meaning of f of x. So far, we know that the probability that x equals little x means that x takes a particular value. So we've looked at, for example, probably that x equals 2 when we throw 3 coins. f of 2 means that the, the, the meaning of that is the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So in the context of our previous problem, this means then what's the probability that x equals either 0 or 1 or 2. So we'd simply add those three probabilities together. 
So it's an accumulation of probabilities up to and including the value stated. So f of 2 is, equal, is the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So I'm now going to show you the meaning of f5 minus f4. Let's suppose we have a discrete random variable that can take values from 0 to 5. It doesn't matter what the particular probabilities are, but let's say the probability of x being equal to 0 is p0. The probability that x is equal to 1 is p1. So these are just symbols standing for probabilities that haven't been um, worked out yet. So the meaning of f5, f5, uh, you should know this from the previous uh, bit of this video, it's probably that x is less than or equal to 5. So that would be, in terms of p's, that would be all of them. p5 plus p4 plus p3 plus p2 plus p1 plus p0. Now f4, I'll just put that in a different colour perhaps. Okay, um, f4 would be the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 plus the probability of 2 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 0. So if we're doing subtraction, uh, this is f5, subtract f4, then you're going to get a cancelling out apart from the last term. So the meaning then of f5 <coughs> subtract <coughs> f4 is equal to, I'll let you think about this for a moment, p5. So if we look at um, the probability distribution we were working with earlier, um, let's have a look at <coughs> how we would interpret f of 2, f of 0 and f of 3. So f of 2 is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So this includes all the probabilities up to 2 added together, and that will come to 7 eighths. Now the probability that we've got um, f of 0, well f of 0 is simply going to equal p of 0. So f of 0 and p of 0 are always the same. And in this case it will be 1 eighth. And finally f of 3, <coughs> well f of 3 includes all the probabilities as it's the highest number. So f of the highest number will always be 1. So those are important things to remember. So I'm now going to show you um, how um, what's called expectation algebra. So if you want to know what um, the expected score when our value of x has been multiplied and had something added to it, then you will have been shown in your lesson that that's equal to a times e to the x plus b, and that the variance of a x plus b is equal to a squared variance of x. Uh, and that more detailed explanation would have given, been given in your um, lesson as to why these rules work. But just to, to simply show you some examples now, um, let's suppose that e of x um, equaled 5 and var of x equaled 2. Um, what is the value, therefore, of, um, say, let's e to the 3x plus 2 and var of 3x plus 2? So... Um, applying the, the rules above, um, then e to the 3x plus 2 will equal 3 lots of ex plus 2. We already know that uh, ex is 5, so we're going to get 3 times 5 plus 2, which gives me 17. And the variance will be 3 squared var x. We know that the variance was 2, so we're going to have 9 times 2, and the answer will be 18.